Hello. Here is a little correction to what I did in the original lecture for the black body radiation. We were calculating the average energy using the Planck's method of calculating the average energy. The average energy is now given as a summation of epsilon n e to the minus epsilon n by kt and here in the denominator I have epsilon n by kt. Remember epsilon n is n h nu that is Planck's hypothesis. We have seen that n can go while we are calculating the average energy this n equals to 0 will give me 0 here. So epsilon n, epsilon 0 will be 0. That doesn't contribute. That is what we have seen. So even if I write from n equals to 0 to infinity here, the summation in the numerator actually starts from n equals to 1. For n equals to 0 term, epsilon n is 0. But in the denominator, we should keep the entire range because remember that it's the defining the probability which is from the probability density to get the probability you have to integrate over the entire range. So that's why this is from n equals to 0 to infinity and here in the denominator n equals to 0 do contribute. So if you calculate this what you get epsilon bar as is h nu by e to the h nu by kt minus 1. Let me write here the value of epsilon bar again. And I divide by kt here, which gives me a kt in the outside here. First we simplify the equation a little bit, we consider x as h nu by kt and remember that epsilon bar was kt earlier, so I just write epsilon bar by kt in the left hand side, then you see in the right hand side it becomes quite a simple expression now, n equals 0 to infinity x n e to the minus nx. And then in the denominator, you have almost the same thing other than that n into x. We defined x, so let's call this quantity as y. And you will see it will be useful for us to calculate dy by dx. The derivative comes inside and operates and I have x over here. When I take the derivative I get a minus n so that minus cancels with the minus that I have taken in the left hand side. So you see what I get here is the numerator of this expression. So in fact, minus x by y dy by dx is nothing but epsilon bar by kt. Because y is this and that is what is sitting in the denominator here.
this I can also write as ddx of ln of y because ddx of ln of y is nothing but 1 by y dy dx. So let's calculate ddx of ln of y because you see this is nothing but my epsilon bar by kt and x is something h nu by kt which does not depend on n. So if I do ddx of ln and y, ln of y, that L y is sitting over here, that x can be multiplied later because there is no summation over the x. y is n equals 0 to infinity e to the minus nx. Now here I can break out this summation. So I have log and then the summation can be broken out in 1 plus e to the minus x plus e to the minus x whole square. Uh, that's a whole square by the way etc. Now this is 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube which I can write as 1 by 1 minus x. So 1 by 1 minus e to the minus x. Now I calculate the derivative. The first term is 1 minus e to the minus x which is the derivative of the log part, then I get uh, 1 by x derivative which is minus 1 by x square minus you remember I am not writing here and then uh, you have the derivative of minus e to the minus x which will give me a minus e to the minus x. So that is what I get here. One of these cancels out and I take e to the minus x common which gives me e to the x here and then minus 1. So nice. So now I know what is this quantity ddx of ln y is minus 1 by e to the minus x minus 1. So I can now start writing down what is my epsilon bar by kt. It is minus x. So minus x is nothing but x is nothing but h nu by kt. So this is h nu by kt. And this quantity I have calculated with a minus sign so that minus cancels this. What I am left with is e to the x minus 1 which is 1 by e to the h nu by kt minus 1. So epsilon bar you see that h nu by e to the h nu by kt minus 1 which is what I have here.